Now, last week we saw some uh, disruption of services on e-citizen and which also affected other service providers. And it was a big one. The CS for information said, yes, 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 yes. Uh, there was an attempt. He called it an attempt <laughs> at uh, uh, destabilizing the e-citizen platform, which didn't succeed. And we were trying to ask ourselves, so what exactly happened? Mm -hmm. This morning we're joined by an ICT lecturer and a cybersecurity expert, Austin Onyango. Good morning. Good morning to you, uh, Muga and Du. Eric, welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here today. It's the hot seat of the situation room. Thank you very How much. How does it feel? Uh, it feels warm enough. <laughs> <laughs> warm enough, really. Eh? <laughs> yeah. City, is it warm enough? Yep, given the weather, the climate outside. About to uh, yeah. Inside is warm. Yeah, so warm, warm is good. Yeah, warm is fair. Warm is a, is, a, is a good place to be. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to see you after many years, Austin. Thank you very much. Good to see you as well. Mm, like I was just telling my colleagues, this guy and I, we did the thing of growing up together. He is <laughs> the guy who actually yeah. is the concept prover that you went to school. <laughs> <laughs> you had classmates, eh? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, because of this guy, we now know you actually went to school. <laughs> mm. <laughs> He's a nice city lecturer. I'm a public lecturer. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you, you both ended up lecturing. <laughs> Somehow. Yeah. Somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank mm. you very much. It's, uh, like I said, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. Mm. And uh, again, it's a public service that we do evangelizing uh, more on uh, cyber security mm. and what we need to do and what we need to know. Thank I you. think mm. it, uh, uh, it's important for us to and keep the that discussion you, The going. path you've chosen is truly a path of an evangelist. Mm. <laughs> mm. Are you an evangelist? <laughs> Kabza? Kabza? Yeah. Bring in the people. Mm. Bring in the people. Yeah. City, mm. give him the day's proverb. Our proverbs for the whole of this week come from the country of Somalia. <laughs> Somalia. Okay. Mm. A man who doesn't know about war is likely the one who rushes to it mm. a man who doesn't know about war mm. is likely the one who rushes to it mm. what's your interpretation of this in this context i could put it this way um i'll give an example in in the area of ICT, ict mm. and especially security so cyber security if you're not aware of what you need to do or what you don't need to do then you're likely to fall into trap. You're actually a good candidate for a cyber uh, attack. Mm. Uh, that's what I'd put it. So knowledge is power. And uh, if you're oblivious of certain things, then you're, you will uh, suffer the consequences. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I'd put it. All right. Yeah. So let's look at last week. Mm -hmm. There was all this talk, you know, yeah, there's some, some tweets from a group calling itself Anonymous Sudan saying, you know what? They say Kenyans think actually they have a robust system, robust Kitugani. <laughs> we have brought it down. We have actually gone into this e-citizen platform of theirs. And this coincides with just days after the president publicly launched an expanded e-citizen program. Mm -hmm. While we are offering more government services on this e-platform. Mm -hmm. And then people are not able to access it. So they could, some could, and then it's basically intermittent and interrupted. What exactly happened last week? Maybe, uh, let me put it this way. The, uh, a cyber attack is, is generally an attempt to access maliciously and deliberately access uh, private data. And there are many motivations for it. So you could find uh, the attacker is probably a hostile nation. It could be a terrorist group. To this, who wants to disrupt your services, could be a criminal organization who wants to maybe gain access to financial systems, could be a disgruntled employee who still has access to the system. So for this particular case, it's not very easy to pinpoint and say, okay, fine, what happened? Of course, what they did is that uh, there was a denial of service attack, mm. meaning uh, they bombard your system with a lot of data. Mm. Uh, making some of the component unaccessible to you or to the user. So if you don't have the safeguards in place uh, and proper backup solutions for, yeah. for your system, yeah. uh, you're likely to uh, um, suffer a lot of downtime 
and of course and that's the goal of the attackers so the attacker this time just wants to make sure to make your thing not work yeah it could not be not necessarily to steal data. data yeah it could just be to show you that i can do it there are even hackers who doesn't do it for the sake of it there are people who i think we had some attacks a few maybe a couple of years ago where they mm. just defaced the the uh, uh, website of certain organizations yeah for the sake of it you see so there are different motivations so in this particular case we we can't pinpoint and say okay fine this was country x uh um or group y or group y doing this you can tell even from the last couple of years countries uh if, even from the us and uh, russia issues however robust you might think you are there's always uh vulnerability meaning the attacks and the the threats continuously morph so it's important to ensure that your it security professionals are constantly abreast on what's going on and you've seen that with uh, especially financial institutions have invested heavily on ict security mm -hmm. and uh, they pay uh, their staff pretty well they train them well and uh, you realize also that um, the weakest link usually is employee. Mm. Yeah. But let me ask this yes. question. Yes. Well, as you're speaking, um, mm. I am looking at the leapfrogging uh, progression of ICT, the world around it, mm -hmm. digitalization, and all these fancy things we keep hearing. Mm -hmm. Is the security of this very system keeping up with that progression? Yes, it's a continuous, continuous uh, process. So uh, initially, and I'll go back to the education sector, um, when we were going to university at that point, at that time, ICT, had, I mean, the internet had started, but we were not really focusing more on security. But now that uh, we are more reliant on digital platforms for almost everything, organizations have now to focus on that. Institutions are now training and uh, ensuring that they offer that because that's a new that's an area a new um uh, career path for a lot of young people now mm -hmm. because that's where the weak link is and as we keep going the threats keep changing they keep morphing and the uh people behind the security also keep learning so to uh, avoid those uh, to actually manage or mitigate those threats and which is the most important part of it but it seems to be like one supports the other because uh, if you uh, digitalize or the ICT component of your business has is enhanced, mm. it looks like you are then exposed to more threats. Now, if the threats are actualized or you actually see an attempt at them, then it also means that you then have to invest in even a higher security level than you previously had. Uh, it looks to me like a good business model. It is a big good business, mm -hmm. business model. I mean, that's why you see it's a, it's a, it's a new career path. And mm. in fact, organizations, are, uh, um, uh, new organizations are just coming up specializing only on ICT security, you see. And, uh, and it's the same people. Let's put it this way. The skill set of the attacker and the security guy. Of the pretty much the same. Yes. Yes. So you remember initially we would have somebody create a virus and then also create an antivirus mm. Mm. <laughs> so I, I create a problem and sell you the solution mm. yeah so th that's what's that's what's been happening but uh, it's a it's a continuous process organizations really have to um, invest and emphasize on training not even just uh, ICT staff but mm. training all um, staff on what to look out for see some of the threats are very simple like a phishing uh, kind of threat. Mm. They would say, they trick, uh, they would send you something, uh, an email to trick you into logging into a similar kind of website mm. that looks like yours, but maybe it's now standard group, the double P. Mm. If you're not careful enough, you link, put in your credentials, and mm. now all of a sudden the fellow has the login and, log and password into your network. Mm. They can now infiltrate, they can install mal mal malicious software, uh, they can steal data, uh, uh, personal information. Uh, the organizations that have actually shut down just because of uh, um, that kind of threat. Because mm -hmm. we have, I think there's a, there's a there was a group, there's a international hotel group that lost almost 300 million 
personal uh, records. It was stolen from them. And now, remember with the hotel, we're talking about credit card records, mm. talking about personal details. You know, so you're looking at threats for, uh, um, what do you call it, um, identity theft. Yep. And uh, compromised, compromising uh, people's uh, uh, financial uh, accounts. And we've even seen them with some of our, um, let me not name uh, particular organizations, but some of our payment platforms, yeah. especially mobile payment platforms, going through these kind of scenarios and when they do and they've also invested heavily in in cyber security and uh, uh um, it security however in some cases you realize there's even collusion again that we go back again to the employee so there's also an element of integrity mm -hmm. so there's different different uh kinds of uh, um factors mm -hmm. that uh, determine how secure your network will continue will, will be yeah so the most important thing is to protect your network do the right things uh update your softwares as simple as that patch your systems put the endpoints uh you know like firewalls and uh, um and uh, we even have cloud firewalls now but, but yeah. Austin, yes. you know even as you say these things i hear you yeah yesterday i was reading an article in the um, business daily uh -huh. there's a picture of a young lady kenyan she and her colleagues managed to infiltrate Kenya Revenue Authority. Mm -hmm. Okay? I think I read about that as well. Ooh, yes. yes. 300 million. Yes. They, one of the accounts. Mm -hmm. Now, I would assume that an institution like Kenya Revenue Authority would have everything that you're saying. Mm -hmm. And more. As I would expect of the Central Bank. Because they have everybody's details. Yeah, you can imagine. Everybody in, in this ev and yeah. the every business. Mm. Okay, well, every business, not every, <laughs> but, the ones who pay but everybody. <laughs> yeah. so, so, what I'm saying <clears throat> is, if they could, it then tells us that they were either really very good at what they sought out to do, mm -hmm. or Kerry didn't quite do what they were supposed to have done. Yeah, uh, two, those are those are two possibilities. Maybe it might not be as robust as you think, or it might be as robust as you think, but, but then there's collusion going on. And when the collusion goes on, again, it comes back to an element of uh, a factor of uh, integrity of the employees that you may have. So there are so many factors, and I think uh, um, <coughs> we continuously use uh, solutions, software solutions, uh, hardware solutions to protect ourselves, but we still have other factors that we must consider as we move forward last <clears throat> week kenyans were assured that you know no data was lost none of that data had been compromised mm -hmm. um usually if somebody was going to hack into my accounts you sometimes see these phishing things and you see an email that has come maybe 12 of those has come and says you know you've requested a new password you know very well you have not so ignore it if you haven't because mm -hmm. somebody trying to get in mm -hmm. right so then of then you are you are secure that okay since i didn't click I didn't whatever nobody has come into my email or whatever it is that they're trying to do we were then assured with the whole e-citizen fiasco that uh, no data had been lost none of that had been compromised you wouldn't really know until it has happened that it has happened isn't exactly. it exactly isn't it mm -hmm. so how then can assurances be given for something like that that you say no data was lost or no data was cloned would there be something that you would see like if i walked into a room if the forensic folks came in i touch a desk i'd leave some dna right i touch your hand you would be able to see something Indu was here isn't it yeah can you do that also in this cyber world would you then be able to know if somebody cloned information or moved information as it were how would you know for sure that this did or did not happen yeah that's why we uh, conduct uh, um, in our industry we conduct uh, audits so the same way we do audit financial audits for for a system to know if somebody stole money from from the organization mm. we also do audits of uh, actual it systems mm. so there's some there's some uh, kinds of attacks like uh, SQL injection you will never see anything it's a, a direct attack into the, the database and you will for you you'll there'll be no trail to show that do actually did this mm -hmm. but somebody managed to hack into the database and collect all that information and get out and even probably clean some kind of a trail mm -hmm. but there's always with the forensic ex experts they're able to do that of course organizations could not cannot 
it's, it doesn't make sense to hire forensic <laughs> before experts something before happened. something happens. But yeah. you should continuously have those audits mm. being done mm. to show you how vulnerable are we. We always say there are two types of organizations. Mm. Those who have been hacked and those who don't know that they've been hacked. <laughs> yeah, the same way we have two types of people. So everybody those, has been hacked. Yes. Those who have lost data mm. And those, and those who are about know. to lo lose data, right? <laughs> because you're told they back up your 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 your, your laptop. Say I'll back it up tomorrow. Yeah. Then you're in the middle of writing your 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 your, your thesis, and you've lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> so those kind of things. So those are just uh, simple um, practices that I think, uh, and I, I think that's why, that's why the uh, training is is extremely important for staff to know. Um, use a little bit of common sense and also use the best practices to ensure yeah. that... Uh, so could they be sure of that position? Could when CS Owalo says nothing has been lost or nothing has been compromised, could they be absolutely sure of that? Yeah, he should be talking from a point of, of knowledge, meaning that he has he has people who do that. I think ICT Authority has invested very heavily in that area of, uh, of uh, ICT security. Mm -hmm. um, I know uh, even from the way back when uh, Bitang and Demo was a, was his, uh, was a permanent yes. secretary. Mm -hmm. They've invested so much in, in, uh, in the area of security in collaboration with the different organizations, mm -hmm. like even Computer Society of Kenya, the universities. So it's a collaborative effort because they recognize there was that risk and uh, people had to bring their, put their heads together. So from where he sits, I'm pretty much convinced that he's speaking from a point of knowledge. And uh, I wouldn't expect him to say that if yeah, he sure. wasn't. If he wasn't okay. sure of that, yeah. What I mean, it seems to me also like it's kind of like scare ta tactics when somebody wants to be able to come and tell you, look, you may be all secure. It could be Fort Knox, mm. but there's a possibility that somebody could get in. And you talk about making sure that things are secure mm. for something like that. That's extremely sensitive when it comes to information and data. I'm talking about government services yes. here. Would you say that it would be at the echelons of security? Is the kind of uh, um, buffer that government needs to have mm. to make sure that you know such a thing should not, not happen, happen again. again. Yes, they were definitely after this particular incident. I'm sure they're definitely reviewing uh, some of their um, uh, protocols uh, to ensure that that doesn't happen. You can imagine even software uh, um, uh, solution providers like uh, Microsoft, they always send you some things called updates. Mm. And uh, some people don't, maybe, most of those updates is because sometimes they've seen some vulnerabilities and you need to upgrade so that you're not uh, attacked. So mm. and I, I, I believe um, the, um, uh, the, 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 the uh, people running uh, the eCitizen platform mm. are reviewing that. Yeah. And uh, they probably will be able to tell us better when uh, they come and talk to you. Uh, if, if you do invite them, they'll tell us a little bit more of what they have done to ensure that it doesn't happen again. But I know they're hardening their systems for sure. Mm -hmm. That would be the best, that would be the first thing to do. That would be the first thing to this do. It would be the most obvious thing to do. The most obvious thing First to do. thing is... Review <laughs> what happened. <laughs> say, what, what can we do different? Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, these threats keep changing every day. Mm -hmm. You think you know the solution today and then tomorrow it's a new... It, it's just an innovation on the on the evil side I would say mm. <laughs> yeah so but there could be also some back channels so yeah. if we are talking about this e-citizen platform uh, being able to provide all these services thousands of services you're basically talking about it linking with the other government websites now you'd assume that the other government websites for example if e-citizen gets to a point where it's offering you are able to go to county x and apply or renew for licenses and get information it means e-citizen is linking to the website of makweni county wajia county all the 47 counties that means that all those websites must be as robust as the e-citizen platform ideally those government websites are I believe they're hosted in one particular place. Mm -hmm. It's just that you're accessing them from different uh, locations. But they're hosted in one particular uh, uh, data center, we could, we could put it that way, with, a, with a, um, um, backups somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you host them in the same place, so ideally the uh, security, pro the security um, systems employed are supposed to be the same, meaning it protects all the particular different uh, sites because they are sitting on one server, so to speak. Or one is that not a danger, though? 
If you host all of them, you can imagine 47 county governments mm. all sitting there. Mm. All the government state departments sitting there. Mm. All other institutions, power statals and all. All of them offering government public service being hosted in the one place. It means if there's a vulnerability, it's exposing all of them. It is a risk if you don't have a redundant, redundancy option. Mm. Meaning, I host this systems here, but I have a recovery system somewhere else that is running at the same, at the time, same time, but not through the same, not on the same uh, uh, server. Okay. So if I go down, if this system goes down today, there is a different, you can quickly switch up, so you, you minimize your downtime. Otherwise, you would uh, you'd definitely be out for, say, a day or two, somebody decides, and that's how ransomware normally works. Mm. You find uh, they put you down, say, if you want to come back up, <laughs> you need to pay us some money. And uh, you pay, then they bring back your systems. Wow. Yeah. So those things happen, uh, oh. it's, and especially in the financial systems, in financial uh, uh, systems that, that run. Mm. But uh, like I mentioned earlier, the financial services and financial providers, bankers, have really invested heavily on that. The redundancy options, because you can imagine if a bank is down for five hours. Yeah. I think you can, the bank run would be quite, se quite severe. Mm. Banks definitely will never tell you that uh, we have been hacked <laughs> because it's not good, it's not good for them, it's not good for you no, to it's know. Not. <laughs> but, but they do run through these problems all the time. And uh, if you look at the numbers, uh, you'd uh, pretty much be shocked. But uh, uh, they, I know they, they've, done, they've done a lot. Over the years, they've really done a lot in terms of securing what, uh, I mean, their services and ensuring that they have minimum disruption. Okay. Yeah, and so uh, I'd, I'd uh, imagine the, the e-citizen platform is also, uh, I'm 100% I'm sure they have redundancy options. So you would, it could be that even when it came back up, it, it was running from a different platform mm. as they try and sort out the other issues. Frederick says a system is better when that system is attacked several times. And like a system that has never been attacked, there's a server, a secure system. There's never a secure system. The only uh, this security does is delay attacks before security intervenes. You agree, Olimo? Yeah, ideally... Uh, the the more attacked you get, <laughs> the harder you become <laughs> and tougher. Well, it, it, it depends, but I don't, I don't. I believe that you just uh, uh, deploy the best practices, mm. uh, security practices, so you don't. Uh, so you can avoid. You can learn from other people's mistakes as well. So you don't wait for for it to happen to you, so that you um, uh, react. Mm. But uh, in certain cases, a lot of people have. A lot of organizations have learned mm. from uh, those kind of attacks. So I don't think that's the best way. Just uh, the best way for me would be to deploy the latest uh, system to continuously retest and check your your security um, uh, uh, protocols within the networks and so it's a continuous process of checking rechecking and 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 uh, redeploying and up upgrading mm. to ensure that uh, you are as secure as possible of course you cannot be 100 percent secure but uh, like I would, i'll agree with him because there's, there's a it's there's never 100 percent secure system mm. but yes you can definitely uh, avoid uh, you can you can you can avoid um, certain attacks if you are proactive. So mm. Proactivity is something that we we, we uh, definitely uh, encourage in the area of uh, cybersecurity and uh, IT security in general. It seems to be the opinion, and maybe it's a truth or mm -hmm. facts rather, that uh, the hackers always seem to be one step ahead. Like you know, you're fixing the thing. But there's somebody who's, well, you, you, you stomp out this head, there's another one that's growing here kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They always seem to be saying, well, okay, you can fix that one, but we've already, you know, cooked up something in the kitchen. Yes. yes. Then, then there's also the thing that those of you who operate in the cybersecurity world know who these hackers are. You kind of are aware of their footprint. You kind of know this is the work of this person, right? Or, or this entity. What would be difficult in then being able to get them into the space and say, well, 
And I'm reminded of a movie whereby a guy who was giving bad checks then essentially was co-opted by the FBI to work for them. He said, look, there's no one who knows, who can find these guys better than the guy who's been stealing from people. Mm -hmm. So let's have him on our team. You see where I'm going? <laughs> yeah. A lot of security organizations <laughs> do that, actually. Mm. Yeah. I mean, once they, um, they actually analyze and see your skill set in that area of, <laughs> of hacking, yeah. and they realize that, yeah, you are a pain in the neck, yeah. then they, they will, bring you on board. bring you on board and say, teach us how to, to, to avoid this kind of attacks. Mm. And uh, okay. usually it's a compromise. You either go to, maybe you go to jail or we, <laughs> we work, you, work you work for us, you know. You, you, yeah. yeah, because some of them are really, really good. Uh, but some of these attacks are not very complicated also. Mm. Yeah, uh, you find some of the attackers are 14, 15 year old kids and they're just doing it for fun. But, but yes, you, uh, they, there is a way of, of I mean, re knowing that this is, and some of them, they don't hide. I mean, they just hide under, you know, they're black, 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 uh, black hats. Yeah. So they hide and uh, we have white hats who are ethical hackers. So the ethical hacker is, very, is, is most likely able to and figure out who this guy is. Person, huh? yeah. Explain yeah. to us mm. what What's an, an ethical, ethical hacker? hacker is. An ethical hacker uh, is uh, somebody who's been trained, who has the skill set of a hacker, mm. but he doesn't do it for evil purposes. He does it for good. So he works more on the security side mm. of, of things. Mm. So he, has a, he could do the hacking, he could do everything. So send a, send a thief to catch a thief kind mm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are certifications for that. Institutions are offering those certifications uh, to get that level of skill set, to know how vulnerable you are, how a hacker would come and uh, get into your systems, mm -hmm. so that you protect yourself uh, uh, from, from those attacks. So if you have the knowledge, then you're in a better position to, to anticipate and even to, uh, to come up with the proper parameters to, to secure your systems. Mm. Yeah. So if you're looking for a job, the best way to apply for a job Hack the system. Well, actually, <laughs> actually okay. if you say hack, it sounds <laughs> negative, but <laughs> let them understand the full range of your skill set. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Show them you show them. Let them see. <laughs> and tell them show this you is what I can the, really do yeah, for this you. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, like, what, what happens, like, uh, uh, organizations, when we, we say organization, organizations need to test and retest, one of the first tests that we do is um, uh, what we call a penetration test. Mm. So penetration testing with, with the, the organization uh, uh, team of uh, of uh, experts will come and try and infiltrate your systems, All right? Just to see how Strong. prepared you are. Some cases you find people have really done a good job mm. securing the system. Some cases you, you get in there quickly and you tell them, <laughs> okay, my friend, I mean, you, I mean, you, you have nothing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in your system. I'm in your, system. I'm in your, I'm in your email yeah. or something. And they, they, you know, so, and this is what you need to do. Mm. You're given a report that tells you this is what the things you need to do mm. uh, to ensure that you're in a better position and to avoid um, that, uh, uh, those kind of risks. And uh, yeah. Money is a sensitive subject. Correct. So before we go to crypto, which will be <coughs> the question I ask, let's start with this current financial system. We keep hearing and thinking, you know, can my bank be hacked? Because all the information that they have of me and all nowadays with uh, online banking and all, how robust and secure are the banks? And how can I, as a customer of a bank, determine whether this particular bank is better than the other one in terms of their cyber security? Yeah, those are some things, I mean, those are questions you probably uh, would probably ask the, the institution, but I know for sure banks uh, use a very uh, high level security systems. Now, when you talk about online banking, this is where now the, 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 the challenge sometimes comes in because mm -hmm. you'll find uh, maybe I'm on my way to to some place and I don't have internet, so I decide to use uh, unsecured public Wi-Fi. Uns pub public Wi-Fi, unsecured Wi-Fi, and uh, somebody's there's a man in the middle there waiting. Uh, you can see, you can actually access and see your transaction, and basically you're giving him your username and password, you can transfer money to themselves. So those are things that are those are some areas that you can, the areas of weakness. So even personal, as a person, as an individual, you should also take caution, precaution to ensure that uh, uh, 
Number one, you don't use unsecured uh, uh, Wi-Fi. Mm. So yeah. don't don't transact, don't do your online banking transactions anyhow. Lee. Anyhow, yeah, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's where a little bit of uh, uh, knowledge comes in in terms of uh, user knowledge. Mm. So yeah, essentially, what you're telling us is that when you have this information being given to you, there's free Wi-Fi. Mm. <laughs> they should also add free and dangerous Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Most Wi-Fi solutions, you realize, uh, most Wi-Fi hotspots, you realize they always have some kind of a password. But mm. if you find one that has no password, you need to be a bit cautious. Maybe try and browse uh, and do a few things. But generally, you're exposing yourself. Right. Yeah, exposing yourself. Uh, I would not encourage anyone to, to use uh, unsecured Wi-Fi um, mm. um, uh, hot, hot, hotspots. Yeah. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage anyone to do that. Mm. cryptocurrency and blockchain mm. okay so this whole thing of you know there's this blockchain technology that you know helps to create security helps to retain and maintain um, confidentiality in transactions and then that's what cryptocurrency rides on please teach us in five minutes Molim. <laughs> what are all these things uh, we can talk about Bitcoin and uh, the area of, uh, of uh, uh, the concept is, is, is good and uh, Bitcoin is actually a secure way of, of doing transactions and it's also an uh, anonymous way of doing transactions. Now when we come back to, to uh, ransomware, I'll use that as an example. Most of these people when they ask you for money, you're not sending to their account. You're sending through Bitcoin because yeah. it's kind of like untraceable. Mm -hmm. So it has its pros and cons but uh, the value and of course you've seen what has happened some 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 of those uh, the, the initial uh, uh, cryptocurrency um, platforms are really really good but we've also had some fraudulent ones yeah <laughs> over time yeah so again it's uh, it has morphed into something different so it's not this they ideally how it was uh, conceptualized but yes it is a good uh, uh, concept in terms of uh, payment systems and uh, uh, value for money and uh, and retaining the, uh, mm. the value of your money. Yeah. There was a recent report that showed that uh, Kenyans lose billions of shillings um, every year through these crypto con games. So somebody has come up with something, you know, it's a cryptocurrency, you per purchase and you're trading into it and then suddenly it's all gone and it's gone missing. Mm -hmm. How can people protect themselves? Yeah, you do research on which particular currency you're going to use. Uh, it's just like buying stocks. You need to find out, is this the best stock to buy? Uh, anybody can come up with a cryptocurrency and then market it and sell it. And you put in your money and then it, they shut down and what happens? You've lost everything. Mm. Yeah, so it's about research. But some of them, some of them will do a lot of good work, like uh, the one for Dr. Ruja. Yeah, it's very well. Uh, the lady who, what, what's it called? Um, one coin, eh? One coin, yeah. So one coin is this one started by this particular beautiful lady who dresses very well, speaks very well. She's called Dr. Ruja. Says, you know, she's uh, very well educated, has worked in all this, and she wants to democratize finance. Mm. And she goes around the world, you know, marketing this thing and saying, this is what we are doing as a movement. And then suddenly one day she goes missing. Disappears. Yeah, disappears. Just disappears. Disappears. So, yeah, so it was a, again, it was a marketing gimmick, you know, you, you, in, you sell anything and then you, you go, the same people who sell us land that doesn't exist, uh, you know, you put, put in money and then after you raise some 300 million, mm. the fellow is missing in action, you don't know what, ha what has happened. So again, it's, 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 it sometimes is, uh, it's, if it's too good, be very cautious and also look at the one the tried and tested uh, um, cryptocurrency uh, platforms. Those are the ones that I'd, I'd suggest for anyone to, um, I, um, you know, invest in. Mm. Yeah. How do you protect yourself? I mean, as an individual who's doing your email, your banking, your, all of that. And we're not even talking about big institutions mm -hmm. like government or, you know, b uh, banks. But an individual who's doing your run-of-the-mill uh, mill email and your banking app on your phone or whatever. How can you be sure, apart from, you know, not getting onto public free Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and things like that. How can you be sure that the apps that you're using then are actually secure? I mean, for example, you know, just looking at somebody, the example I gave earlier, you're in your email and you're just getting prompts. Somebody's yeah. trying to log into your whatever account. Uh, here's the code. 
obviously it's come to your email so you're not going to use the code but these threats are there every day how can you be sure that what you're using is safe because you don't want to be locked out of the doors of technology yeah you, you, you're right you see what, what happens even with your, with your own personal devices our own laptops our own phones you know the phone is just as powerful as your, your laptop mm -hmm. you know? and you should also use the same protocols i mean there's software to protect you on the phone and uh, to, to sweep and see if you're secure if you have any viruses if you have any malware because malicious software is there to steal personal information mm -hmm. yeah so you need to also update your phone make sure you have uh, uh, protective software on your phone as well mm -hmm. so that you uh, you minimize the risk of being um, uh, compromised mm -hmm. yeah or your banking uh, details being uh, accessed mm -hmm. uh, um, you know um, by an authorized uh, individual yeah yeah they keep talking about changing passwords and the importance of changing passwords yeah but then passwords one how many passwords are you going to remember every time this system tells you, you can't use a password that you've used previously and then you know you keep changing passwords every two weeks from you know an it systems manager point of view mm -hmm. is there a way that this can be done in a different manner that i don't have to keep changing my password because i will not remember this password <laughs> and this will now create problems yeah the, the best practice of course to periodically change your password and I think for us, uh, when we don't, uh, there is an el element of, we, we become a bit lazy. You're like, okay, I'm just used to, this is the easiest password. Yeah. You have to make your password number one very, very a bit complex. But, that's but you the can point. still remember. If it's it. complex, you'll forget it. <laughs> no, you, you, Kwanzaa, have if you to keep find changing a way. it. <laughs> yeah, if you keep changing it, of yeah, course. I can make like, it complex and then so, let it stay for five years. One. Yeah, like and some it, institutions, of course, will, uh, will prompt you to change every. Uh, uh, probably every two months or yeah. three months because yeah. it's part of the security protocol and it's it's part of a, a, a way of protecting you and the institution and as an individual also you need to just have your own protocol of it, it it cannot be that complex that you can't remember it you you have to put something that it is complex for somebody else but not too complex for you to remember you see the problem yeah. Austin is you've got a password for let's say here for device for your office uh -huh. you've got a password for your banks <laughs> your online banking yeah all right yeah. let's say you're operating three different bank accounts mm -hmm. those are four different passwords mm -hmm. you've got your passwords for your social media platforms mm -hmm. passwords for your Gmail <laughs> passwords for people have like ten different passwords yeah and you still have a password for access for unlocking your phone well, all yeah, you, you, different digits, different number of yes. digits, different number of characters. Yeah. There are too many. And all of them asking you to keep refreshing your password yeah. at different times. Yeah. So if you re refresh the standard group password this morning, the one for your bank asks you tomorrow, you will not yeah. remember. <laughs> You're <laughs> lost. You're completely lost. You're done. Yeah. My personal experience is that I, 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 I knowing the risks of, 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 uh, of being compromised, yeah. uh, I feel changing the password for me is actually not, uh, it, it actually not a very difficult thing. I just make sure that I have a slightly complex password, and I know that if and especially if, I'm using, if you're doing, uh, a lot, using a lot of Wi-Fi uh, mm. devices, then uh, knowing the risk, having that knowledge of the risk, you will realize that even doing those changes is not a big problem. Yeah, it's something that I mean, it's, it might be, diff, it might be uh, bothersome, you could say, but yeah. but it's it's something it's worthwhile. Uh, okay, that is from my own personal perspective. Some people seem to have come up with solutions, and they've created these things called password vaults and managers. password generator, password yeah. manager. So you, this it, thing it creates you. your passwords for you. Yeah. How do you trust these things? Yeah. Maybe this is now the All of new us know my mode of phishing. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't use any of those device, any of those uh, applications, because i i know a bank that i used to use and they'd give me uh some device to to generate a password every time i do a transaction mm. but that password would expire immediately after some you know, after, TP. You know yes yes so that, otp kind yeah, of thing yeah which was okay i mean for OTP me that's is fine yeah that's, that's, that's pretty yeah it's just mm. you know it, it, but and it's see, a second layer six, yeah, it's a second layer you know there's a first layer second layer uh, uh, authentication uh, um uh, kind of thing mm. But uh, these other ones, uh, if I don't trust the um, developer or the, uh, pro uh, the the developer of the a particular product, if it's not from an authentic source, 
then I would not uh, advise any, I would not advise to use those. I, I'd prefer just to use a good old fashioned way of doing the passwords. So not even a password manager is advisable? Password manager, of course, like in Gmail, you know, you have that that you can use but mm. uh, still it's again it's just managing but you still have to put in you, you still have you still log in if, without logging in you still can't access that password manager mm. so it, you'll have to recover the password again so you know <laughs> it'll tell you you go ahead and uh, you want to create a new password fine you know something of that nature but uh, but yeah if you need to be secure then you really have to also just be uh, patient and uh, uh, and deliberate about it Clear uh, passwords yeah. and walk about around with a notebook. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's also that's down. also risky <laughs> because because if I All access your, your notebook, are in one. <laughs> if I access your notebook, then I'll be able to do some test, some whatever. Passwords, of course, you uh, people even just have so such simple passwords that you can guess mm. and 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 log into the into the systems. So you put your son's name and the date of birth, mm. and there's uh, maybe he'll. You love the sound so much. Let me try this. Mm -hmm. Try five, six, seven, eight times, and you're able to log into the system. So, again, let's be a bit more um, um, deliberate and a bit more uh, um, cautious when we're using this kind of thing uh, mm -hmm. solutions. Yeah. So you look disturbed. <laughs> you know, it's very stressful. <laughs> The password issue. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, the, the ICT thing uh, has very many benefits, mm. but then when you come to these password things, it's very, very confusing. In all honesty, it is next to impossible to keep remembering those things. <laughs> and that's your first point of <laughs> security. Because I can't remember. No, <laughs> having a password and a password that's a bit, that's not too simple. Like you cannot be CT Muga nineteen sixty four. I mean, <laughs> CT Muga. Please don't say that's your password. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> it is not. Yeah. Every time he's, he's told to change, he adds a, a new he adds CT. An exclamation! <laughs> exclamation. Yeah. Yeah. Like One, two, three. The, the yeah. people yeah. from Nairobi add like, No, no, no. But, but actually, that is what I do. <laughs> no, that is my password. But I only, I add a U or yeah. a W. Yeah, uh, you, you add a, a three. Uh, yes. Two thousand and twenty-three. And then an apostrophe. Mm. Yeah, but you see, that, you see, that's good. That's a, that's a bit. Uh, it's making it more, yeah, more, complex. more complex. Which, mm. which, is, which is good. You put an apostrophe. Yeah, some, but then sometimes character. I forget. <laughs> because when the, I'm not sure there's an apostrophe or an exclamation mark. And then you're locked out. Then I'm locked out. And so I'm you just have to have a system. system. <laughs> you just put a system saying, okay, my password will have this and this and this. So whatever you do, you know there will be an apostrophe and uh, maybe Especially a Especially with these bank accounts, <laughs> then you're locked out. Yeah. yeah. Then, then, then you have, have to go, go to the bank. Then the bank brand. tells you, come and come visit and us. Yeah. And that was not the intention. I had and no you issue. you have to fill out a whole new form yeah. and explain why are we resetting your password. <laughs> and you that can't write that because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, me, I write. Uh, because I had good. forgotten. I forgot it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this is good. They locked you out so that uh, uh, you're able to... Uh, so they've secured your fund mm -hmm. by locking you. <laughs> <laughs> there might, might have been somebody else trying to access your account, you know. So, so they say, okay, awesome. not I have had the money in there is hardly worth the bother. <laughs> So, so, so I don't really understand why. Maybe that's why you, 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 you that's why it frustrates you. <laughs> perspective, city, perspective. Twenty million shillings is hardly worth it. To some people, it's yeah. 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 But, some of but, us, but, some us, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's, money. it's, it's all about it's perspectives, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dennis Ngodo says, honestly, this password thing is just an age thing. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> He's absolutely right. There's no question about it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, Austin, for joining us today. Thank you for the time and thank you, uh, CT and Du, <laughs> uh, as well. Uh, it was a pleasure being here and uh, continue watching your show yes, and yes. learning a lot. We learn a lot every day watching this show. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.